We have a really great control net model for SDXL. Today I want to show you the new control net models called the control net plus plus all in one. This is specifically for stable diffusions XL models. You are able to use one control net file and collaborate with different control net preprocessors. For example, we have the open pose, line art, depth map, scribble, etc. Everything can be used with one control net model. By using control net, this is a new way to use the condition transformer and it is able to detect whatever input the image preprocessor provides, which the control net should handle, and then it will pass to the control net conditioner itself to handle the specific control net tasks and type of data. So, right here, they have explained the open pose output from the reference image, and here we have the depth map of another reference image. Also, Canny is supported, and of course, line art. Very important things to do include control net, and animate style line art, as well as MLSD and Scribble. So, there is just like a normal control net you can use. But then we are just required to download a 2.5 gigabyte file to use in your ComfyUI or automatic Wellam1 Weven. Now, when you download these files, safe tensors files, I recommend you rename them because by default, it is called diffusion pytorch model .safe tensors and that is going to be complicated when you are using multiple files in your control net folder. I would suggest just copying the name, the control net name of this one, SDXL 1.0, and renaming these files when you download them. Now I have already downloaded it here, which as you can see, is Diffusion PyTorch, and I'm going to rename this one as well, just for easier recognition. And so, there you go, we got this one renamed and I have the other SDXL models, but I'm not going to use those in this video, just focus on this one. So let's go to ComfyUI and check it out, we can click the Run GPU and start this. Okay, so once we are in the ComfyUI default workflow, we can experiment with the ControlNet SDXL. We can see right in this area should be the place that we can do the control net models. So let's say apply control net advance. There will be a control net right here. We drag that out to the control net loader. And as we navigate down in this drop down menu, we can see the control net union SDXL1. This is the file name that I renamed. Let's try this one. This time I'm going to use the open pose preprocessor. Maybe we can try something with this and the checkpoint models. Again, select the SDXL type checkpoint models. So for example, I have RealVis SDX version four, and we say one man in the text prompt just to generate a guy. In here, we can do something with the dimensions. It's pretty easy and self-explanatory. We can load an image of notes here for the open pose reference image, and then we can have the output of the preprocessor connect to the applied control net image. Lastly, we connect the positive and negative data connections and the case sampler. That is basically what we need for a basic setup of control net. Now let's use this AI image as a reference and we can do a similar pose because we are using the open pose here to replicate the same pose of this image. We can check if this works or not. Okay, so the whole thing here is working so far. As you can see, the pose here, because I have set different dimensions, I should set this one a little higher. And we can drag the image preview image here to see the open pose output right here. So here's another one. We got another same pose with a different style from our reference image. Okay, so open pose is working. It's perfectly working with our SDXL models. Let's try another one. This time we can see the depth map and connect the depth map preprocessors to here. Let's try this one. We have a depth map preprocessor image preview from this output of the reference image. 
and we get another style of image like that as the output. We have the same shape and depth of the reference image, and so far it looks good and we just have to optimize this a little bit more. Maybe put a more photorealistic text prompt in here. So I do a photorealistic result in urban cities, and let's try it again. We can have better coloration, but for the demo, of course, image are not very detailed. I just want to test the control net here. As you can see, the overall shape we got from the depth map is pretty much here. Let's try canny. Maybe we can have canny edge or canny. And yes, we got a canny edge preprocessor result. Looks like it works by just using one control net model. So yeah, this is pretty good for, you know, compact styles using one file here, just 2.5 gigabytes. This architecture combines every control net model and squeezes that data into one control net model file. That is basically the simple way to explain these models. And let's try with multiple control nets to see how we can connect them. So for example, I can use one control net loader and apply different control nets in the same workflow. Usually, we can do three control nets in one workflow. This happens quite a lot. We can connect each control net conditioning in sequence. Lastly, we have the reference image, the same reference image with different preprocessors. So for example, let's say we have canny and line art. Let's try line art. This time we can use this one and we have another image preview for this one. Connect these lines together and let's see what else we can play around with. The scribble, yes, that's the one I want to try with the scribble line preprocessors. So right here, we got this scribble line. Okay, so everything is loaded. And the output image should have really hard outlining and very strong strength following the whole picture with the source reference image this time, because we have a very strong canny line art and scribble line, and the whole thing should be, yeah, very strong. As you can see in the preview image here, here's the line art scribble line and canny. Lastly, we have to connect the control net models. So right here, I just got one low control net model file, and all we can do is connect each applied control net custom node here with the same model. And there you have it. We have successfully run this one. And we have generated a very strong influence by the control net model this time. And let's try something else. Maybe we don't need the scribble line too much. Try the depth map. It will look better than using the scribble. This is a pretty nice combination using open pose, line art, and depth map. All right, the output image is here. The guy looks on fire because of the strong influences at the end. We can lower these settings as you are able to control this. But so far, I see we can use multiple control net type together with only one control net model. That is the beauty of it. And the memory consumption in the comfy UI backend is pretty low. As you can see, there's one image applying, but although it's using one image, one control net model, it will be loading different preprocessors as the processing here. It defines three control nets at the end here, but in the load control net, it is actually only using one control net model file here. So it's a very compact size, just 2.5 gigabyte, and we can handle all the control net models at once. And it is in SDXL, which a lot of times we realized SDXL was missing a set of control net before, and this is really good. So that is it for this video. Very simple and easy to run. Just download these files and you can apply them in SDXL control net models. I think in the future, we won't need to get additional open pose or line art SDXL models. So until then, I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day. See you, bye.